You know, I'm Generation Z. I'm a Zoomer, if you will. And I'm pretty spoiled when it comes to memory. You know, all these old guys love telling me about how uh, back in their day they had 20 kilobytes and that's all they needed. But uh, now in the 21st century, we've got more memory than, you, than we know what to do with. You know, uh, this laptop is flexing 32 gigs. But uh, on the RP2040, we don't have such luxury. The chip has about a quarter meg of SRAM, which is enough memory to store about two or three seconds of this uh, MP4 recording. So tonight we're talking about the chip's internal SRAM and how you can make the most of it. So there's 264 kilobytes of SRAM on the chip, and this is split between six banks. We got four uh, 64 kilobyte banks and two four kilobyte banks. And all their, uh, their addresses are right next to each other, so we can just treat this as a single block of memory. For the most part, we can, uh, we can ignore the uh, physical partitions, but because this is a multi-core system, there, uh, there's a problem. So how the bus is set up is only one bank can be accessed by one core at a time. So if two cores try to access the same bank, one of the cores are going to stall. So to avoid this, the engineers striped the, uh, the first four banks. So starting at this address right here, uh, the first word is in bank zero, and then the second word is in bank one, and so on. And this is done so both cores can share the memory without constantly stalling each other. Uh, you, you'll, uh, you'll still occasionally get a core stall, but it's, uh, it's much less of a ri risk with this setup. And uh, it is to note the, uh, the last two, uh, the last eight kilobytes are not striped. So starting at this address right here, um, that's just going to be one contiguous bank. And you don't want to, the last thing you want to do is have both cores in the, like the same bank because one of them is going to stall until the other one gets out of that bank. So that, that's a great way to lock up a processor. And if uh, for whatever reason memory striping is your thing, there is a non-striped mirror starting at this address right here for the 464 uh, kilobyte banks. So this is um, this is if you just want a single contiguous memory bank. And on top of the uh, 264 kilobytes of SRAM, we also have uh, 16 kilobytes of exit flash that we can use as RAM, and another four kilobytes of USB DP RAM. So once we uh, once we configure those, we can uh, we can use those as memory, which brings up our total to 284 kilobytes of memory. So to see this in action, let's uh, let's load that SRAM address in. So uh, let's put it right here, and we go SRAM and byte four zero x two followed by seven zeros, and then let's uh, let's put our banks in. So first we're going to have our uh, non-striped um, bank four. So that's going to be two, uh, yeah, two zero zero um, four zero 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 zero, and then um, oh, SRAM bank four, and then bank five is going to be directly above that. So we go 0x2004, zero 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 and what is that, 1000, zero zero zero. Uh, let me, oh, yep. And then the non-striped uh, bank 0 is going to start at uh, 2, so we go 0x21, zero and then 6 zeros, and then that's a 0, oh, not a 0. Let's just copy this. So then each of these uh, banks are going to be 64 kilobytes apart. So that is right there. And this is uh, these are all the addresses you need for the SRAM. So when I'm debugging code, uh, one of my favorite methods is to just do, use like a blink test. So like, um, let me show you. So instead of like having this loop where we just blink the LED on and off, uh, let's get rid of this. Um, I like to have this wait for event. So this is going to be a low power loop. So it'll, uh, it'll hit this instruction and the processor will go into a sleep state 
until an event is sent so we're not using more power than we need to and then I'll do something like I'll compare like two registers and then I'll say like branch if not equal to the loop and then after that I will uh, branch to our LED on function so this will like if we're comparing two values and we want to make sure they're equal if they're not equal it'll just go to this loop and if they are equal it'll turn on the LED and then go to the loop so this is um this is just a very simple way of kind of checking if uh if our memory is working correctly so let's load that uh that base SRAM address in and then let's um let's move uh 69 into R1 and then we'll store 69 into that address so this is actually going to eat into our program so that address that uh that zero, two zero 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 whatever it um it's right here so when we store something and kind of use up those uh the first four bytes we're going to kind of overwrite these two instructions so both these instructions are two bytes but we don't need to worry about that since our code has already moved past this so then after we store that we like um we load our two uh from that address so the idea is that um yeah we store this value we load it at that address and then we load it into a different uh register and then we compare them and if everything's working correctly uh, both values should be the same and therefore the LED should turn on so here's a good demonstration of that program and uh, you do want to make sure that uh, it is word aligned so just plug that in uh, load in your uh, test and the light goes on so this tells us that we successfully stored uh, that value 69 at the SRAM base and then it uh, loaded back into uh, we loaded it back in successfully so now that we've established that let's uh let's have some fun with the memory striping so uh instead of storing 69 at the very beginning let's store it 12 words uh from the base so we're still in bank zero but uh we're at a weird offset so let's uh let's load that uh bank zero address in for the non-stripe mirror so sram bank zero and then let's um when we load that in we're going to load it at an offset of three words so if the mirror works we should get the same value back all right so this is the sram test for striping so just plug that in and now when we load that in uh the light goes on so this tells us that the mirror is working correctly and in case if you're uh, you're still not convinced, just change uh, just change one of these offsets. So let's uh, let's change this to 11. So here is our uh, second SRAM test. So just pop that in, and then when we uh, when we load our test in, the light does not go on. So uh, yeah, this just shows you how you can use uh, memory mirroring. That was kind of fun. But um, how do we access that uh, that sweet extra 20k? It's actually pretty easy. So, uh, you know, we have the 16 kilobytes of the exit cache, and then we got the four kilobytes of the DP RAM. And all we need to do is disable them. So the exit cache starts at this address right here. So let's copy that in. So let's just go exit RAM, and then load that address in. And we'll also need the exit uh, control, which is, um, I believe, right here. So now when we go to, uh, where is exit? Uh, oh, same chapter. Just flash. And then the flash registers. Yeah, so exit cache is SRAM bank. Um, yeah, control right here. So all we need to do is uh, reset this bit. So let's go back up to our code and then uh, let's just mark this test. And then we'll load that 
exit control in and then we'll uh, have a zero and then we'll just store that into the uh, into the control register so now we're going to set this bit to zero which should disable the cache and give us access to that memory so now let's load that address in so instead of sram let's get the, uh, the exit cache and uh, we don't need this weird offset stuff and let's just uh, let's just use the same. Um, so all we're gonna do is load, store it, and then load it back in. So first, let's test this without the uh, without the disable. So let's just comment this out. So this is the first exit uh, test. So when we load that in, the light does not go on, so it fails as expected. So now that our program has failed successfully, let's uncomment these. And um, if you haven't already, you want to be making sure that your alignment is set correctly. So this is the second exit test. So when we load that code in, the light turns on, which means that we have successfully taken control of the exit cache for RAM. So the USB interface is infamously uh, complicated, to say the least. So I'm going to take a bit more of a brutish approach. So if we go to subsystem resets, you can see that the uh, the 24th bit is USB control. So to uh, to gain access of that DP RAM, all we got to do is uh, reset the whole USB. So let's grab this address right here and go, um, where are we? Let's go USB DP RAM and that was byte 4, 0x, 501, and then five zeros. So now let's, um, let's replace this, the USB DP RAM. So for our first USB test, it fails as expected. And now let's, uh, let's copy this loop up here. So let's just, uh, we, all we need is these lines. So just come down here and let's uh, let's put it right here. So instead of the 25th bit, we'll reset the um, the 24th bit. So we'll just shift this over 24 times, and uh, this should be uh, this should give us full access to the DP RAM. All right. So for our seventh and final test of the night, let's load this in. And the light goes on. So uh, yeah, now we have uh, full access to the DP RAM and a total of 284 kilobytes of memory.